Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how we get started with scoping our automations. Let's dive in. First, it's important to remember a couple of things we talked about in the previous videos. Number one, you can't automate a process that doesn't exist. So if you have a process in mind, you need to have it written down or you need to go and write some of those steps out. So what are some good examples of processes that you might already be using, but you need to automate? Maybe processes like onboarding new users, offboarding terminated users, documenting users groups, billing reconciliation. If those things sound familiar to you, those are the kinds of things that we see automated all the time here at Roost. But in order to get started with automating those processes, we need to write the process out to make sure we understand each individual step and we need to scope out the process to determine how long it's going to take to put this process together. Remember, when you're building a process, you need to start with an MVP. Start with the first thing that you need, get it working and iterate from there. Now I've already given some really big examples of automations you might have in mind, but there are so many other small automation examples that will make your life so much easier. And I have one here from one of our service partners, Will Young from Bering McKinley. So let's take a look. So in this specific example, we're gonna look at scoping an automation that takes a specific activity or event in HubSpot, extracts the data and brings it in and creates an activity in ConnectWise Manage. This is something that Will had to do over and over and over again. And while the task itself may not have taken a long time each time, when you compound five minutes day after day over a year, you're saving hours and hours by creating this very, very small automation. Let's scope out that process here. You don't have to do this in Roost. You can simply write out all of the steps for this, but it is an option to scope these out in Roost itself. You can do this using the no op action, which is an action that does nothing. You can describe what you need to do. And then from there, you can start replacing those no ops with the actual actions, activity or data that you need to get that automation running. Now here, I've already favorited the no op. So by doing this, I can right click and add no op to the screen. And this could be the first thing that I need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna rename this to what I need. So first I need HubSpot to send information to Roost. Okay, this is the first thing I need. The next thing we need to do is I need that information sent to Roost and I need to extract that data. So I can click on this guy, I can do extract data. And just to visualize if I'd like, I can go ahead and just do this here. All right, from there, once I have the information, I need to actually create an activity in ConnectWise. So I might do something like this. I need the process to create a ConnectWise activity. And then I might want to create a new no-op here that says something like adds data to activity. And then I can go here. I can go here. This is obviously not a functional workflow, but what this does is it gives me a visual of the actual flow of the process. If I wanted to start thinking through the troubleshooting that needs to happen, what if I want different types of events? I could do that here as well, visually. So maybe this is a sales pitch event or something like that. You're having that first conversation with the customer and you want to record it. And maybe I want to make something here for, let's say a sales demo. I can represent some way of doing this and doing this. If you have an automation in mind, make sure you identify what the actual process is going to look like and then make sure you consider all the contingencies. Is this the only path of information I need? How am I troubleshooting? What am I expecting for my inputs? What am I expecting for my outputs? At the end of the day, this may end up only being a two or three step workflow. What's the MVP for this particular workflow? Well, I'd probably start at the top two. So I can just add here real quick a note, identify this. And I can say, for example, if I wanted to edit this note, I can do something like step one, I can identify how to connect HubSpot to Roost, perhaps with a webhook, and then test out identifying an event and extracting that data. From there, I can then take the next step of getting it into ConnectWise. And there we have it. We have our first step towards building this automation. The next step would be, of course, taking that data and adding it to a ConnectWise activity by using some of the ConnectWise Manage actions. All right, now that we've taken a look at how to scope an automation, how to think through it, we've actually brought on Will from Bering McKinley to talk about the automation he actually built based on this. That is the HubSpot task to ConnectWise manage activity. So thanks for being here, Will. Take it away. Hey, everybody. This is Will Young from Bering McKinley. So first, you can see this workflow is very simple. It's only three steps. These are my favorite types of workflows. Nice and simple, but overly effective. So if we look at this, the first thing I want to point out is our trigger. So this workflow 
flow is triggered anytime um, we catch a webhook. And so what I did is we built a, a workflow within HubSpot. So anytime we get a first appointment, we're going to send a webhook to Roost. And that uh, webhook is what's triggering our workflow. Now, once we catch that webhook, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our variables. And I'm doing that all over in the transition as data aliases. And I'm just setting our ConnectWise ID, company, contact, first, last name, and email. Once we set those values, we're going to take some of those. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the associated contact within manage. So I'm using the list contacts function. And under our query conditions, I'm looking for contacts that have the same ConnectWise company ID and the same last name. Once I've done that, I'm going to select my contact ID that I'm going to use to create the activity with. And this is uh, one of my favorite map attribute command or map attribute variables. Um, we're just looking for the, the contact ID. And just in case there's two contacts with that same name, we're going to select the first one. So now that I have all my variables from the webhook and the contact in manage, the next step is a post activity. Now within Roost, we don't have a create activity command. So we're just using the generic API request. So I'm just saying, hey, uh, we're going to post to sales slash activities. And in my body, I'm using my company ID, contact ID variable, um, the assigned to. This is going to the member who, who created that. It's hard coded in our instance. And we're going to just make sure they get notified. And that's all there is to it. This did not take very long to build. And it has had a awesome uh, impact on our company because now we're making sure that anytime the salespeople that are doing stuff in HubSpot, it's making its way into manage. I can effectively report on it. Um, it's been awesome. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Will at barringmckinley.com. Thank you, everybody. That's going to do it here for this video, guys. Hopefully that was helpful for you. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to build a very simple Hello World automation so you can get cracking on building automations. We'll see you in the next one.